Oh, good morning, Birmingham. It's a delight, a joy to be here in your midst once again this uh, still morning, this morning. Talk to you about Jesus. Talk to you about the Son of God, who is altogether lovely, who is uh, a wonderful, wonderful Saviour. And uh, he's uh, reaching out to you here today that you, um, <coughs> that you might trust in him, that you might come to him, and that you might be saved, salvation. That's what we need because, well, we've all of us, you know, as a human race, we've all of us uh, departed from God. You know, um, we've gone far away from him. We all, like sheep, have gone astray, is how the Bible puts it. Astray from God, that is. Astray from our Maker. Departed from his paths. And now, of course, well, you know, we seek out all kinds of, well, all kinds of things, all kinds of inventions, you know. Inventing uh, something, you know, some system, something to take the place of our maker, something to take the place of God. The Bible calls it, the Bible calls them idols, you know. And they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. It comes in the shape of religion, you know. Anything but God, anything but, anything but the true and living God. The Bible, one man said, the, 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 the Bible, one man said once, you know, that uh, the human heart is an idol factory. Provided, for, you know, making up, you know, idols as we go along. And including it in that, of course, is idolatrous religion. Of which the city of Birmingham now didn't used to be, but now, now it is absolutely chock a block full of idolatrous religion, taking the place of the true and living God, who has given to us his word, who has given to us light, to the law and to the testimony. That's God's word, this revelation, to the Lord, to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. So whatever anybody, any man, any woman says to you pertaining to God and the things of God, get out the yardstick, get out the Bible, measure it against God's word because if it doesn't speak according to this word it's because that person whoever he or she be whatever they say to you it's because there's no light in them you'd like to have a copy of God's word his written word that is an extract from the Bible I got a whole Bible I got New Testament, I got this John's Gospel, either one you can have, freely offered to you, no cost, no obligation to you, the written word of God, check it out, come to the light, come to the light of the world, come to Jesus, beg your pardon, beg your pardon, can't hear you madam, Come and talk to me. Come and talk to me, madam. You'd like to have a copy of God's Word? Then please come and ask for one. Gladly, gladly place it to your hand. It's the Word of God. The living Word, able to bring salvation to you, bring that light to you that you need, the understanding that you need, the word of God given to us to reveal God, the true and living God to you, to bring to you his salvation. 
So you'd like a copy of God's Word, you come and ask for one. Don't be shy, don't be afraid, come and ask, freely, freely offered, freely received. And then of course, well, if you've got a question, I'd like to try and answer if I can. I haven't got the answers to all your questions, but I do have the answer to the most important one, how a man, how a woman gets back to God gets right with God with their maker. And then of course, well, if you're in trouble for whatever reason and you'd like somebody to pray for you, I would be quite happy to do that also. It would be a joy, I would count it a privilege to minister to you. So the Bible, the Word of God, taken from the New Testament for you today, here in the book of Romans, Listen up, Birmingham. Listen up. This is the Word of God, the living God. He says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain, in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections for even their women that change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, having the natural use of the woman, turn in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain, God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but of pleasure, and them that do them. The state, my friends, of mankind, the state of men and women in the city of Birmingham, religious and otherwise. That's the state, that's the condition of all men, born into this world, departed from God, departed from the true and living God. And that's why we're here today, my brother and myself, we're here 
and we are eager to preach the gospel to you, the good news, the just shall live by faith, by faith in the Son of God, the only way back from that dark, dark, miserable path of sin. They knew God, says the apostle, they knew him, but they did not like to retain the knowledge of God in them, just like you today, knowing that God is inexcusable insanity. That's what it's called. Exchanging the truth for a lie, Birmingham City sinners. That's what you have done. You have committed an ins inexcusable insanity. You've exchanged the truth for a lie. You've turned to idolatry. You've forsaken the true and living God, forsaken the truth, abandoned it, and now you are faced. You're faced with and under the wrath of God because of your ungodliness and unrighteousness under the wrath of God to a man, to a woman. And the only way of escape, the only way out from under the wrath of God is through the Son of God, given to you in the love of God. God's gift to the world is Son. Given to you that through Him that you might escape the wrath of God. To a man, to a woman, Damn worthy sinners, all that you're worthy of, the damnation of hell, the fires of hell, that place prepared not for men and women made in the image of God, but prepared for the devil and his angels. Fire, unquenchable, unlimited fire, eternal fire. That's the end of your perversity. That's the end of your departure from God. That's the end of your apostasy, your ungodliness and your unrighteousness. That's the end of it. Fire in your mouth. Fire in your nostrils. Fire in your eyes. Fire in your head. Fire in your bellies. Fire in your gut. Nothing but fire unquenchable fire for all eternity unless except you repent and believe the gospel Birmingham city center you are without excuse God says you are inexcusable your insanity is inexcusable you're departing from God to fulfill your lusts, to follow after idols, to turn from the true and living God, to forsake the truth when you knew God, know God, know that God is inexcusable insanity. You have not and you do not glorify God as God. And for that, you are under the wrath of God. The entirety, the whole of humanity, natural born sinners, conceived in sin, born in sin, live in sin, die in sin, and go to a lost eternity unless, by the grace of God, through faith in the Son of God, you are saved, you are plucked as a brand from the burning, plucked from your inexcusable insanity, and brought to your right minds, clothed in your right minds, and sitting at the feet of Jesus and worshipping him. That's your only hope. That's your only hope, Birmingham City sinners, here today, I declare the good news to you. There's a way back to God from that dark, miserable, 
path of sin, apostasy, departure from God, inexcusable insanity. Jesus is his name. I am the way, he says. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Neither is there salvation in any other. None of the name under heaven, under the whole canopy of heaven, whereby we must be saved. Jesus is his name, the Son of God with power by his resurrection from the dead. A living Savior, not a dead prophet. One who's alive and alive forevermore who has conquered sin and death and hell, overcome, overcome by the shedding of his blood on that cross. Without the shedding of blood, Moses says, there can be no remission, no forgiveness of sin. There has to be a death. There had to be blood sacrifice. There had to be the shedding of blood so that you can be forgiven. God's love, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, he shed his blood upon that cross that you might be forgiven and that you might be reconciled to God, that you might be delivered from your inexcusable insanity, your departure from God, that is. Your departure from your maker. Your departure from love. Your departure from the God of love. Your departure from his law. Your departure from the overflowing fountain of all good. And you're left with no goodness at all. None at all because there is no good apart from God. There is no life apart from God. All you have is misery. All you have is death. Living death. Dead men walking. That's what you are. Birmingham City Center. The life is to be found in Jesus. He came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Through trusting in the person of God's Son, believing the gospel, the power of God unto salvation, the just shall live by faith. The just, those who have been justified, those who have been made right with God, through faith in the Son of God, they're given life, life eternal, life everlasting. The just shall live by faith. And oh, without that faith, without that trust in Jesus, in the Son of God, you shall never see life. You shall never know life. You shall never experience life. You come into the world in a state of death, conceived in sin and apart from God, alienated from your mother's womb, alienated from God and from life, and from the life of God, you have no life in you. And all the religion in your city can't put life into you. Muhammad's dead, he can't put life into you. Huh? Pope of Rome's just as dead as you are, he can't put life into your soul. Only Jesus the resurrection and the life, the one who has the authority to give life, and who gives life to those who trust in him, those who come to him, those who believe in him. He gives them life from the dead. He resurrects them. So you see, my friends, it's not, it's not religion that you need. It's, it's regeneration. It's resurrection. You must be born again, says Jesus. God must put life into your soul, his love into your heart. 
God must change and transform you from the inside. The God that you know exists. Inexcusable, inexcusable insanity, I tell you. To depart from God, to live in his world, to drink his water, to eat his food, to walk upon his earth, and to be totally and completely unthankful. Your unthankfulness, that alone is enough, I tell you, for you to face condemnation for all eternity. Unthankful, unholy, ungodly, unrighteous, inexcusable insanity, that's your departure from God, from your Maker. Unthankful creatures who never, never utter a word of thanks to God for your very being, the breath of life in you, the health that you enjoy, even this very day that he's given to you. Unthankful creatures and ungodly with it. What will God do to you in that day, you who never thank him? I tell you what he will do. He will damn you to all eternity. That's what he will do to you. He will damn you in your religion. He'll damn you in your atheism. He'll damn you. He'll damn you whatever you are, I tell you. Unless you return to him in the only way that he himself has prescribed. You do not call God, he calls you. Oh no, no my friends. It's not for you to make up a God of your own fashioning. God has revealed himself. He tells us what he is like because he only knows what he is like. He is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, not three gods. One God in three persons. Father in his love sent his son and his son in his love came and lived and died and rose again from the dead and the Holy Spirit of God is the one, the person who can put life into your dead soul. God is revealed to you. He's revealed to you in his creation. Everything that God has made, the invisible things of God are clearly seen, the Bible says. Oh, all the things that God has made leave you totally without excuse. Inexcusable insanity, Birmingham, that's what it's called. To depart from God, the God that you know is, the God that you can see his fingerprints, you can see his footprints all around you. His work has gone out into all the earth. He has given us his written work, a revelation of himself and what he requires of you. In order that you might be brought back to him, that you might be reconciled to him, that you might know him intimately, that you might know him relationally, and that you might know him in love, that you might know him in security, knowing, knowing that you are right with him, and that for time and for eternity, through Jesus Christ his Son, the Lord has come to reveal God to us finally and fully. Jesus, God's last word to humanity. You take Jesus and you get God. You take Jesus and you get God's salvation. You get Jesus and you get all the blessings that God has for humanity. God's, the knowledge of God, the knowledge of God, Knowing that God is, is evident even within you, in your own being, innately stamped upon your innermost being. And no matter what you call yourself, 
Muslim, atheist, papist, matters not what you call yourself, matters not how you identify yourself as, you have the knowledge of God innately within you and nothing that you do can remove it. You know that God is the true and living God. And one day he'll bring you to judgment, Birmingham City Center. Man has become vain in his imagination. His foolish heart darkens, says the word of God. This is the world. This is the world of humanity apart from God. It's a new God that departed from God. Thought that the knowledge of God, the true knowledge of God, was something not worthy to be retained and turned from the true and living God. And turned to what? Turned to the product of their vain imagination. Turned to their lust. Turned to their idol. Turned to doing. Doing that which they're simply and only what their own hearts desire and what your hearts desire for nothing but sin for nothing but that which is contrary to God all the time vain imagination seeking after that which is contrary to God inexcusable insanity departing from God departing from his love his favor, his kindness, his goodness, departing from the knowledge of God, casting it aside like a filthy menstrual cloth. That's what you've done with the knowledge of God, Birmingham City Center. And because of that, the wrath of God is revealed against you, against that ungodliness against that unrighteousness of men holding down holding down the truth and unrighteousness suppressing that truth and unrighteousness oh it keeps surfacing it keeps wanting to come up but you keep holding it down you knew god but glorified him not as god departed from him in your vain imaginations, in your sin-darkened mind, turning to a mess, a mess of religion, turning to that which is not of God. This is the world. This is the world of humanity. This is your world. This is your, your world, Birmingham City. Apart from the gospel, the only way back to God not your world religions, not Islam, not the Pope's religion or anybody else's, only the gospel, only the good news, Jesus Christ, Him crucified, dead, buried and raised again. Inexcusable insanity, a world apart from God and apart from the gospel, the good news, the only good news that there is in your world today. Jesus Christ and Him crucified, the God of man, the man who was God. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to Himself, dying on that cross, shedding His blood in order to remove the wrath of God that lies upon a world lost and apart from God, departed from God. A world apart from the gospel of Jesus Christ is a world lost, undone, ruined, and faced with the damnation of hell. Hell awaits. Birmingham City Center. Escape the wrath to come. Flee into the arms of Jesus today. Receive it. Believe on it. And thou shalt be saved. Salvation is what you need. Life from the dead. Resurrection. Regeneration. 
not religion. The gospel, the good news, the power of God up to salvation for all who believe. This is a wild, inexcusable, inexcusable insanity. This is the world I tell you apart, apart from blinded, blinded to the reality. The reality of God, the reality of the gospel. The reality, the truth that is, the truth that God himself has revealed to us concerning your condition. Conceived in sin, born in sin, living in sin, apart from God, alienated from God, darkened in your mind in inexcusable insanity. That's the world. That's you, Birmingham City, apart from the truth, apart from reality. And only reality will set you free. And there's no reality apart from God. There's no reality apart from Jesus. I am the way, the reality, and the life, he says. For well, this, this is the insanity that you're faced with. Look at your society. Look at the society of the world. Look at your, look at the heathen world. Look at the heathen religions abroad. Look at the heathen religion that faces your own city of Birmingham. Look at the insanity of your atheism. Man can become a woman, a woman, a man. Huh? The insanity of your murder and your killing of one another. Never done. Never done killing. Why? Because now, now you departure from God. You hate God. And those that hate me, says God, they love death. They love death. And so, and so, whatever it is that you are, you love death. You hate God and you love death. That, that's the end. That's, that's the conclusion of your departure from God. You use your religion to kill. You use your atheism to kill. The unborn, the ancient, the terminally ill. No life, no life apart from God, no life apart from the gospel, no life apart from Jesus, only He, only He can give you life. This is the world that refuses, refuses to glorify God as God. That's the crime, that's the crime, that's what sin is, not glorifying and not fearing God. That's what sin is. Departure from God. Refusing to glorify God. Refusing to obey Him. Refusing to walk with Him. That's sin. That's sin. Not glorifying God. That's what you are made for. That's why you're here. That's why you, you live and have your being. For God gave it to you for. To glorify Him and to enjoy Him. But you can't enjoy somebody you don't know. And you can't glorify Him if you don't know what it is that He requires of you. But God, God has given you, given you His work. God has given you the truth. God has given you even better. God has given you His Son, Jesus Christ, His very best, sent into the world to die on that cross so that you could be reconciled to God, so that you could escape this, this inexcusable insanity, so that you could turn from it and turn to Jesus, turn to the Son of God and be found clothed in your right mind and sitting at the feet of Jesus, restored and reconciled to God. 
But God so loved the world that He gave. And love He gave. He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. This is the world in which we live that meets what I'm doing here today. The preaching of the gospel because that's the very meat. Foolishness says God to those who are perishing. But this is the very meat. This is the very means that God uses to bring men and women to the right mind. Bring them, bring them to the feet of Jesus. This is the very means that God has devised to bring men and women back to himself. Hearing the truth as it is in Jesus. Truth about themselves. Truth about their sins. The truth about their eternal destiny, heaven or hell, salvation, there's urgency about it. You don't know how long you've got in this world. You hear the gospel today, and by going by appearances, that there's not many of you. I've got much of an interest in it. God's saving message, the gospel, the good news that would deliver you from the fires of hell, from eternal damnation, and sending His Son Jesus Christ into the world to die on that cross, to shed His blood in order that you might escape the wrath to come. There is nothing to you who pass by. Nothing to you. I saw it was seen. But there's a day coming. There's an hour coming, there's a time coming, and you will be interested. There's a day coming, the Bible says, when, when men and women will be crying out for the rocks and for the mountains to come down and hide them from the presence of the wrath of the Lamb, the Lamb of God, Jesus, the Lamb of God, who today will take away your sin. But in that day he will be your judge. In that day you will be faced with his eternal wrath. Now, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all the ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. But then, then you'll be faced with the eternal, unquenchable wrath of God, the unmitigated wrath of God. Then, they'll be concerned. Oh then, then there'll be interest. Then you'll be asking the question, where's there a Bible that I might read it? Then you'll be asking, where's, where are the street preachers I used to see on the streets of Birmingham? Too late then. Too late then, Birmingham, now is the time. Now is the accepted time, says God, because now is the only time that you've got. You haven't got tonight. You haven't got tomorrow. You haven't got next week. You've only got now. And now you hear the good news. Now you hear the gospel. Now you hear the means by which you can be reconciled to God. Now, says God, now. Repent, turn from your inexcusable madness, turn from your departure from God and turn back to Him in the only way that you can, in the only way that you may, through His Son Jesus Christ, sent into the world for that reason, that purpose, to reconcile you to God in the love of God. That's what the Bible means when it says, for God so loved the world that He gave. Gave His Son, gave Him up to the death of the cross. So that you, a sinner, 
departed from God in your weakness, in your misery, in your sinfulness, in your wickedness, in the evil of your heart, in your idolatrous religion, turn from it, forsake it, repent of Islam, repent of that heinous religion, that illogical, irrational religion, and all the other all 9,000 of them, turn from them, turn from them, forsake them, repent of them, and your evolutionary religion to that one as well. Turn, 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 why will you die, says God, for there's life. Life eternal, life everlasting to be found, to be had in Jesus, in the resurrection and the life, in the way, the truth and the life in Jesus, in Christ and in Christ the Lord, no other, no other mediator between God and man. Not the Pope of Rome, not the habit of Islam, Jesus, Jesus Christ Jesus, the only mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, the man Christ Jesus, the man who is also God, who took our nature, lived and loved and died and rose again from the dead that you might be made well that your bad head might be put right your bad heart put right and your bad record cleared through the shedding of his blood on that cross dying in the place of sinners rising again to justify them to make them right with god Bring them back to God from their departure, from their apostasy. Come today, come today, Birmingham City sinners. Come today. Today, says God, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. If you repent, I can forgive you on your own sins. If you sincerely repent, you do that, sir. Do that. Do that, sir. Well, you may. So, like I say, friends, no other way. No other way. Jesus is the way. He's altogether lovely. He loves sinners. He loves men and women who have departed from God. He loves men and women who have invented religion, substitutes for his gospel. He loved, loved sinners and gave himself for them. That you might escape out from under that wrath of God that you are presently now under and one day will be for all eternity. Unless, 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 except that is, you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. God now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Matters not where you come from, Alaska to Afghanistan, anywhere else in between. What color, what creed you come under? Jesus, the mighty Son of God, the King of glory crucified, dead, buried, risen, ascended, crowned in glory, ruling and reigning. All authority in heaven and earth is given unto him. The authority, the power to bring salvation to you. But you must trust. You must confide in Him. 
Put your confidence in him. Put your faith in him and what he has done. You must come to him. Look to him. Look unto me, all ye ends of the earth. And live. Live. Life. Sanity for your insanity. Grace. Favor, blessing, peace, joy, unspeakable and full of glory in the gospel, the power of God unto salvation for everyone, no, for everyone that believeth, for those who trust, confide in the lovely mighty Son of God, our Lord. No other way back to God from the dark path of sin. I am the way, says Jesus, the truth and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Repent ye and believe the gospel, says Jesus. Birmingham City Synod, hear the word of the Savior. Repent ye, repent ye, repent ye, and believe the gospel, for the kingdom of God is at hand. You'd like to have a copy of God's written word offered to you freely no cost, no obligation to you. You are simply and only for the taking. I have full Bible. New Testament says Gospel of John. You've got a question, I'll try to answer it. Like somebody to pray for you, glad they do that too. You like a copy of God's Word? Read, study, meditate. Upon the written word of God, his record, his revelation of himself. See the mighty Son of God, these were written that you might believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and that believing you might have life in his name. You like a copy of God's word? Come and ask for one. May God bless you, Birmingham. Bless you and have mercy. Amen. Mercy I see upon your precious, precious, never dying soul.